Hello everyone, I'm Tinrail. Thank you for joining me for a new Kerbal Space Program adventure. I will be playing Career Mode uh, using the New Horizons pack by Kill Ashley, which changes the game quite drastically. Uh, I'll just read a bit from the post describing what the mod is about. Growing tired of the same planets? Need a new adventure? Welcome to New Horizons. Featuring an entirely new roster of planets and an entirely different solar layout, experience a challenge the Kerbal system has never provided before. Designed to freshen up the Kerbal experience, this pack reorganizes the entire system and also adds 17 new bodies to discover and explore. New Horizons also aims to challenge its players with missions needing tight maneuvering to decade-long voyages to the outer systems. I had started a test with this and it is quite a bit more difficult. We can also see there's this incompatible mods detected warning. I am playing on the Windows 64-bit version because I'm using about three dozen mods and the RAM requires me to do so. But I, I've been playing the 64-bit since version 0.24 and I haven't had any crashes related to the build itself, just running out of memory on the 32-bit. So. Let's get started. Let's start a new game. New Horizons. Definitely going for a career. Um, I started a game in 1.0. The re-entry heating was uh, a little bit excessive, but then 1.0.2 uh, definitely dumbed it down. I mean, I can time accelerate four times in the atmosphere with my rocket flailing around and nothing will even blow up. So I'm going to change the re-entry to make it a little more difficult. I, if they change that later, I can decrease it, I believe. Um, everything else is just going to be standard. I had started a moderator game before, and that was a little much for myself. Let's see what we have for a flag. Um, I made my own flag. There it is. Lord Gur. I'll see if I can look at that a little closer. Um, Gur from Invader Zim looks quite a lot like a Kerbal. Um, you can't read it, but there's text that says to make room for the cupcake. Perfect. I will be doing a separate video that kind of goes over my vision for this career mode what I plan on doing as well as setting up all of my stock mods. I'll probably do separate videos for construction and other things that may not entertain or interest many viewers but since I am going to be doing it to accomplish or do anything in Kerbal I will be recording it for at least a while and seeing if there's any interest in that. Uh, there are two things to note about the 64 bit as well as the New Horizons setup that I'm going with. Thank you, Gene, for letting me know this wonderful information. Uh, the first is that it's day, um, but it's nighttime, because this is not actually rendered off of Kerbin. This space center is a, its own little scene that isn't really tied to the actual solar system. And since this planet has shifted, it doesn't really match up. But if I went to the launch pad with a rocket. It would be daytime and everything there is correct. The other thing is the Space Center. Thank you, Gene, for letting me know about the tracking station. Uh, while I'm here, before I back out and show you one of the 64-bit bugs, I'll just show you. I've got some auroras uh, from the Astronomer's Pack, clouds, and the resolution for curve is a lot nicer. But New Horizons, those planets that I was talking about, I'll just zoom out and show you. Kerbin is no longer orbiting the sun. It's orbiting a gas giant with uh, a moon, a planet, and an asteroid. And all of this makes it quite a little bit more difficult to actually get to places. And that may be my own inexperience or unfamiliarity with the system, but I think that like Vanor getting out to this distance would take quite a long time. Um, I'm not sure how far the part of the system in the stock is compared to this. I'll have to look at that later. But as you can see, if I back out from 
the Space Center, I have every single one of my structures fully upgraded. This is a bug with the 64-bit version of Kerbal, and they're not actually fully upgraded. I don't get any of the benefits from these. If I tried building a rocket larger than 18 tons, it wouldn't let me. Um, I can, however, not upgrade them. And this is purely visual. It It's not actually that complicated to fix. It takes like five or six seconds, but I'll be doing it transparently off camera so that whenever I'm upgrading, everything will show up as it should. But just to know if you, if I'm moving around the Space Center and things show up like this, and it, it doesn't accurately reflect what's going on. But um, I will now update all of my mods, and I'll get back to you guys in a bit. Hello everyone, welcome back. I have adjusted my mods the way I would like, and I'm ready to get started. This intro to the series is probably going to be fairly generic, because things don't really change until I get out of the atmosphere of Kerbin. Uh -huh. Hello, Gene. So, the first thing is to pick up some contracts. Uh, I already have some active contracts for altitude and distance. Uh, I do wonder if this peaks out at a, a higher value in the atmosphere. I know orbitally I'll go seven, several thousand meters a second. I wonder if I could get more of these in the atmosphere if there's just a couple of these to kind of get you going for more money at the very beginning. But from the available, let's select uh, launch our first vessel as well as gather some science from Kerbin. Getting out of the atmosphere and orbiting Kerbin will easily follow. So I'll just go build our first rocket, which will be a bot and an engine. So, take the command pod. I'll use three of these so that I can uh, see the snap because I will have science on the ground, science in the air, and then science landing somewhere else. So ideally, we will land somewhere other than the launch pad. Actually, let's not put a parachute on there. Uh, the engine we start out with is this flea booster, which is incredibly tiny and will not go very far. But I want to make sure that I get off to the probably the grasslands. So I will stick more engines on the side and I'll change the staging so that. I can have my ship topple over and then I'll fire the central stage to send me further horizontally. I'll have these three parachutes so that I can safely land. And I will. Uh, I'll be trying to min max some of the science just because I played the new Horizons a little bit and it was very difficult to get started. I believe uh, Kill Ashley reduced the science values for the different areas to make it harder. Uh, they had expressed that they felt the original. I forgot to collect science from the ground back there. I will be able to do that uh, some other time. Get a crew report, keep it. Um, but a lot of people just fly off to mid -miss and come back with thousands of science very early on in the game. And I'm definitely one of those people who did that. I mean, you, uh, you get to orbit, you land on the moon, uh, you get a contract to go to Duna, which is pretty simple. and after that, you just go to Midmus with a ship that'll skim around all the biomes and come back and unlock the whole tech tree. So this will be more complicated. Um, you can see I have this scan mod. One of the mods that I'm really looking forward to 
is ScanSat, which lets you build satellites and give them some functionality to observe uh, low height, low resolution height, high resolution. You can get to biomes and find anomalies. Uh, I believe that there are, I don't know how many, lots of anomalies to find. Uh, they're not something that you would kind of accidentally stumble across in many cases because they're so small. But I can pick them up with my satellites when I unlock a certain tier. And I, I think they're like obelisks and kind of an homage to uh, a Space Odyssey. And I would really like to check them out. So I happened to find a contract pack that also gave contracts to go find them, which I wanted to do anyway. So if I can get money to recoup some of the costs of the mission, I am looking forward to that. Uh, another mod that I have is uh, D-Magic Orbital Science, which gives me lots of gizmos that don't return a whole lot of science, but every little bit will definitely help getting started. So now I have something from Kerbin's Grasslands. Um, I'll just redundantly grab another one of these, keep the data, get a crew report. Uh, I'm able to get multiple crew reports because I'm using Simple Science, which will take redundant well, reports that would be in the same thing, uh, crew reports, and automatically store them in the capsule. I don't think that's much, it's not really cheap to me. Uh, they have an Easy Science or something mod that will automatically reset the scientists and collect data. This is more of just a convenience thing. Um, but while I'm here, I'll PBA and get an EVA report. Uh, flying over Kerbin's Grasslands, I will keep that. And then I'll also throw Jeb on the ground. Because he's a tough guy. Uh, and I will pick them up separately so that I can get uh, just a generic 2.8 science for uh, the Grasslands. I'll recover Jeb. And Jeb himself had 7.9 science and gains almost no experience. Let's see, my vessel's over there. I will recover it. And I'll get 11.7 science. That is perfect. But let's unlock more parts so that I can get further along. I think that at this point, the, there's more science here. Um, stacked a couple is very important. Uh, but the rockets and fuel tanks are more important than that. I'm considering whether I want to expand out this way before I unlock the decouplers. I think that in terms of getting to orbit. I get a small decoupler here from KW Rocketry, so I don't actually need that right now. I'm going to take the general rocketry and hopefully recover more science so that I can fill this out later. So, this ship is not going to be good enough, but I forgot to get new contracts. It's probably just going to be escaping the atmosphere. Uh -huh. Investigate the island airfield. I don't believe I've ever done that. That's interesting. But let's escape the atmosphere as well as orbit Kerbin. I'm not sure. I actually probably can orbit Kerbin at this stage. Let's find out. Um, I'll probably want to return. Just a capsule. Let's see, I got a long stage up final orbit push. Vesta is a very good starter engine for a high ISP up in space. So that gives me. Um, Quite a lot of Delta V from the 
get-go. I believe that I've read it only takes about 3500 Delta V to get to orbit with the new orbital mechanics, but I am not quite there. I wonder if I can... well I don't have... Uh, I was going to say I could stick some solid boosters on the side, but I don't have any. I also don't have any... I guess I have some fins that may help a little, but I don't have much in the way of maintaining my rocket being stable uh, for my gravity turn. It's fairly heavy. Uh, Wildcat uh, starts out at 285 ASL, max thrust 230. So that's a little higher for more thrust to use. Definitely start with that. Thrust to weight is high enough to push it all. Might be enough to actually get to orbit and return home. I do want to use Jebdiah because oh, I could use Valentina. I will probably be using Valentina a lot just because I'm so used to Jeb, but I imagine everyone is probably doing that because she's the new thing since they introduced the female Kerbals. I could add a little boom just to get going. I do have um, stage recovery so that I can recover funds from uh, stages that I put parachutes on that would not be destroyed by the velocity. But at the beginning of the game, it's often inconvenient to worry about that. Let's fire off you 500. Just to push me up, nice boost at the beginning. Stage that down, stage that down. I'll throw some aerodynamic fins. The problem with the fins, especially with the new aerodynamics, is that <laughs> there's a lot of overcompensation which would drive things crazy. But this looks like it'll go to space. I almost forgot science. I don't have an antenna because I chose not to. I wanted to play the rockets first. But um, upper atmosphere. I mean, this what I want. Go to three again. Now those will probably pull up in the atmosphere. Uh, for re-entry, but I could collect the science up in space, assuming I make it that far. Oh, and this is too big, that makes sense. Uh, I have 99,000, this costs 13,000. This... too large for the launch pad. Let's save this as a uh, first orbit. Let's see how much it costs to upgrade the space center. Seventy-five thousand. Might as well do it. And let's do first orbit. Jeb, get out of there. Valentina, let's go. Alright, let's send Valentina into space after she gets some science for us that probably should have had the very first time the job But let's get it now anyway. Oh, externally controlled by a scientist. I did not know that. Perfect. So, SAS on, thrust full. This may be a bit wobbly, but hopefully we can keep track of trench effects. 
if we can keep this stable enough until we jettison the solid boosters, this wildcat has a gimbal clouds, and we'll be able to easily, very simply, get control of the rocket again. 42 seconds to apolapse, decrease in. Aiming for 90 degrees on the ball. Going full speed. My time to apolapse is now increasing. I have a 22,000 meters apolapse. Pick up some speed here. I already have science experiments for this area. Yeah, I'm gonna have plenty of fuel to get to orbit. 54 seconds to apolapse. Bottle down. 40k. Alright. Looking pretty good. Piece of cake. Now above a minute. 47. Build up some horizontal momentum. We need about 2,000 horizontal speed to get captured in the orbit. We're at 700 now. Speed is lowering. My time to apolapse should start falling. Got all these things to say. Good job. Contract, contract. Distance records, destroyed things. I'll hopefully be able to start using stage recovery to recover things when it becomes efficient to add the parts once I upgrade enough things to make it feasible uh, so that I can try to save money that way. Um, increasing up towards a minute, 60k apolapse. All the records are gone. Way to go, Valentina. You broke them all. Land distance record. See? That makes me think that if I... A plane might not be fast enough, but if I tried sending a rocket in the atmosphere faster, I wonder if I could break some more records. Yeah, I'm going way too fast. My apolapsis is not quite there for space, but I'll, I'll beat that up just before I get there. Uh, my periapsis height is negative 150, that'll be easy to fix. Uh, not in space yet, I'm in upper atmosphere, so these experiments are things I've already done. In fact, let's just... Perfect. Now I'll be in space. Um, let's just fast forward a little bit. Because it will not take much for me to get the level. Well, that's what we're going to do. 30 seconds. I'm in space now. Observe the mystery goo, take a clue for it. And there. It's not quite orbit. But a pretty high apple But 14 minutes to apple that is kind of annoying. Just to get that up. But also, I want to be landing on the light side so I can actually see what's going on. But as we're zipping by, we can pause, take a look out at the stars. So, useless rock, Saren, which actually looks fairly beautiful, and the moon. The moon is still going to be the first 
location that we try to go to, uh, in spite of being captured around this gas giant instead. And I do have a mod for lights to illuminate my ship, which I will definitely be using once I unlock them. Just get in that orbit real quick and then descend back to Kerbin. You already have it? Um. Let's go to here. See if there's anything available. Wow, it's quite a few for just two rockets. Available, very. If there's anything that we can pick up to do on the way home. Return to Kerbin from <laughs> orbit. Um, let's see if it'll give us this one without launching a new rocket. Uh -huh. If not, the next rocket will do anyway. Let's go back and bring Valentina home. So, in orbit, let's just... I noticed that the atmosphere doesn't really pick up until about uh, 35,000. I had a small craft like this. I uh, ran out of fuel around 45,000. And it took 10 revolutions going through the atmosphere at that height before it actually went under 35,000 and then got sucked in until it actually landed. Uh, it's quite different from the soupy atmosphere that we used to have. So I have a, a more science. I might land on the ground somewhere else, so I'll save that. I'm not sure if I have enough thrust in this engine for it to be able to compensate for its own weight in the lower atmosphere along with my parachute. I will attempt to recover it. For money's sake. And this may... May have me land in the daylight. I uh, will make sure that it does. Uh, at the 1.0 release, I experienced <laughs> some trouble entering the atmosphere. Um, tilting off to one side would cause my ship to spiral out of control. Even if it was just a capsule, I think that they had said that the um, focal point for the mass of the capsule was off-center, so it was rotating. I think they might have fixed that, but they also made the re-entry a lot easier to deal with. So I have not tried landing with the 10% increase um, difficulty. So hopefully this is not a problem. Um, I don't mind going with the heat shields and the ablation. Um, I never had a need for it uh, before, and it sounds like at 1.0, 1.2, you might not ever still need to use it. So hopefully they will fix that so that there's a, a reason for those things. Looks like I will land in the water. Let's kill this. I don't know how hard it'll be to roll this. Um, with the 100% heat, uh, I was able to just go to four times speed. Like I said, I think I might mention this earlier, my rocket flipped out of control. It would heat up, but never enough to make anything explode. Hopefully, with the 110%, uh, my science containers don't heat up and blow up because I don't have the capacity to go out of space to recover them. 
So I will just aim for my retrograde marker, try to stay in there so my ship doesn't flip around. Um, I'd love to land in the desert, but I don't think I'll make it that far. If I don't, I haven't... Uh, steady! Lighting this with my keyboard. Um, I think I'll go down to like 1300, 1200 meters a second, and I'll be in light. I actually make it. But I haven't been in the water, so that would be new science regardless. But I imagine I will land in the oceans frequently, nice to something like the desert, which I would not encounter as frequently because I'm just going to go into space. I'm not going to care much about Kerbin. But uh, in situations where I deploy parachutes, if it seems like it may be challenging and I'm landing somewhere, um, I might fast forward through it a little. Um, if it's something like Kerbin that I've done multiple times, and I'm guaranteed to land without problems. I will just skip forward to it. But that's good. I'm going slowing down. My height is uh, eight thousand. I'm not sure. Jettison this or not. 7,000 actual terrain, so it's actually pretty close. Alright, choose that. Head to background. There we go. I can see that a lot better. Oh, I forgot to change the staging for that, so I guess it doesn't matter if I can save through that. Hopefully these I should go and slow enough it won't matter. I think that it might be five actually. Hopefully six meters a second is not too much. Let's speed this up. Slow it back down. Please don't blow up. Perfect. Get a crew report. EVA report, keep it. Store my EVA report. Get, off. Get another EVA report on the ground. Because uh, hanging from the capsule is considered flying. This is a. Uh, very desolate landscape. Let's go home. Board. Two flights in. Lots of science. Two pilots leveling up. 41 science. I have lots of things I can unlock. I think this is a good time to call the episode, and I will see you guys next time. Well, everyone, that ends the first episode of this new Kerbal Space Program career. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the uh, video or would like to see future episodes like it, uh, go ahead and leave a like so that I can see that there's interest in pursuing this. Uh, the beginning is pretty well laid out for a foundation. We're ready to jump to the moon pretty soon and explore Saren after and go elsewhere. Uh, eventually we may even get to Minmus, but um, it used to be a uh, second planet around Kerbin. Uh, now, because it's such a science treasure trove, it's been relocated way out past Titanius. It's actually orbiting Elu now, so it's very far away. But it is still made out of mint ice cream. But thank you again for watching. Uh, this is Tinrail. Enjoy your day.